You can start anytime. I'm going to mute myself because I'm noisy over here. Thank you so much. And I will go ahead and get started. And let me share my screen here. And again, I'm Stephanie Gilchrist from the Youngstown Business Incubator. And thank you so much, SCORE, for, for having me this evening to talk about youth entrepreneurship in our valley and the benefits and, and what we are doing here at the incubator um, to support our youth when it comes to own business ownership. So bear with me while I get this screen shared here with the presentation and we can get it started here. All right, can you see my screen good, This um, the presentation? Yep. Okay, clear. perfect. Um, so again, I'm with the Youngstown Business Incubator. And just to give you a little background, um, at the Business Incubator had started here in 2014 um, and then um, took a sabbatical for three years to um, root the Inspire Mind Youngstown um, chapter, which is a youth program in our city that was founded in Warren, Ohio, and now chapters throughout the nation. Um, so I stepped away on a sabbatical to help with that and then um, came back to the YBI full-time, full-fledged in um, January of this year to kick off our youth entrepreneurship program, which we have been in discussion about for a few years before I even left um, and continue to work with women entrepreneurs. And now I am running our Minority Business Assistance Center and I am responsible for seven counties in our region. So um, I'm excited that I'm able to present a score tonight and just talk about youth entrepreneurship. For me, I became passionate about youth entrepreneurship when I, myself, and my husband, we actually have a barbershop beauty salon in the city of Youngstown on the south side of Youngstown called Ryan's Chair. Um, my husband and I, we were married as kids. So I was 17, he was 18. He's always cut hair. That's been his passion. So we just took that passion and turned it into a business. So here we are 30 years later, 25 years later at that particular location in Youngstown where we purchased that building in the late 90s. And um, we went from a one person, which was him, Ryan's chair, to actually at one point, I believe I had probably about 15 um, folks under us who have done, therefore, who has since moved forward. And um, you will see their shops throughout the city and beyond. Um, so we started that business there. And in starting that um, business, as I began to grow in my career and um, in my studies at YSU and, all, and so forth in business, I realized involving youth that um, that was a huge piece of our puzzle when it came to our city and um, answering the question about economic empowerment, poverty, um, how do we bridge gaps, and how do we actually help the youth in the inner city in particular um, to have a hope and to grow and to build something I love to call generational wealth, where we can stop the cycle of poverty and start a whole new cycle of wealth. And for me, I said, well, entrepreneurship was key for my husband and I, our parents, um, neither one of our parents have a uh, college education. Um, our parents worked hard, but they never taught us generational wealth. They never taught us certain principles. We learned it on our own in entrepreneurship. So I felt it was a great way for us to get our youth involved. So we started teaching entrepreneurship. I started um, doing classes and seminars with the young people in our city um, in Warren on entrepreneurship. And I saw the excitement that they had in their eyes when they would just think about and dream about a future um, where they were independent and they were able to build their own wealth and control their own schedule. So I felt like for us to begin to make that change, entrepreneurship for our youth is the key. So we did start this program in 2020, early 2021, the Youth Entrepreneurship Program. 
and we are so excited. Um, we had 15 students go through our program this year. We did summer programming with the city of Youngstown Parks and Rec and the Beatitude House, and our students learned um, through Lemonade Day about entrepreneurship, and they were able to sell their lemonade on the last day of summer camp. So it was really interesting. In our program, we did 15 weeks with students that were selected through application process and the students all 15 students were able to um, start their own businesses and register with the secretary of state's office um, secretary LaRose came to town and um, while he was in town he stopped by because he wanted to meet some of the kids and visit and talk about their businesses um, so we were able to get their businesses started so all of them have llc's eins some of them are working on their not. What we have one that's a nonprofit. She's working in turning now to get her 501c3. So our students are doing well and they are really trying to, in between school schedules and so forth, they have what they need that basic. So when they're ready to run with their businesses, they can. So we're really excited about the program that we have here and what we have in store in the future. But just some fascinating entrepreneurship statistics. 90% um, of new American billionaires, billionaires are self-made. Um, and I'd love to share that with our students and our youth and our community, because sometimes we get the notion that um, if we go to college and we do A, B, C, D, we'll be rich, or we, we think that this will get us to a certain path by working a nine to five. And that is that can be the case when it comes to college and all of that. You can make a good living. I'm a college graduate. I believe in education, but I also know that college is not for everyone. And that sometimes it takes you just being inventive to and self-made to hit that certain status in life. And then in 2016, there were 25 million Americans who were starting or already running their own businesses. Um, so as you can see, that number keeps climbing every year. When If you get alerts from our Secretary of State to say, hey, this month we had like 5,000 new businesses start. So entrepreneurship is like this new hip thing to do um, when it comes to our communities and economic development. Um, the one, the number one reason why businesses fail is there's no market need. So we believe in teaching our youth about market research and understanding, are you solving a problem? Is there a need for what you have in store with your business? 46% of small business entrepreneurs are between the ages of 41 and 56. So then the question becomes, if 46% um, is, is that's the percentage of those at that age bracket, then what, what are the other age brackets? And for me, what we've witnessed in recent was youth. So the difference in the 54% um, would be the youth and the younger generations. Um, there are 582 million entrepreneurs in the world. 20% are of our small business fail within the first year, which is why we believe it's important to support. And studies show middle-aged men start the most successful business. Um, and that, that is a course we've learned as well um, in our studies and just going throughout the programs. And just if you just look around you every day, that, that is very true because of um, the disparities and the discrimination that are that a lot of women face when it comes to businesses or young people face because they'll say they're too young to even start a business. So here I saw Cameron Johnson. I said, Cameron, it's very interesting um, about you. In 1984, you were born. Um, so that makes him um, nine years younger than me. So Cameron is now um, in his, what, 38, probably. Um, and then he's a businessman worth 10 million. So Cameron Johnson, how did Cameron start? Well, Cameron Johnson started his journey at the age of 12. When he bought his sister's Beanie Babies, I don't know who remembers Beanie Babies, they were hot for a second, and he bought her Beanie Babies for $100, so he's, and then he turned around, so he gave her $100 for the Beanie Babies, he was already practicing business, right, exchanging money for a product, and then he sold them online for over 10 times what he paid, and then he took the money, created more businesses, and by the time he was 15, his businesses combined they were bringing in $300,000 to $400,000 a month. And again, that was at the age of 15. 
So Cameron is proof that if you're if you have a young person who's innovative and who's thinking and thinking outside the box, like you have beanie babies just sitting there. What do I have already in my possession or around me that I can use and make money from it? And so that is something he did. And then he decided to invest in other businesses as well. So again, by the time he was 15, he was bringing in more than what some people make, a lot of people make more than I made in a year. Um, he was doing that monthly, three hundred to $400,000. So Cameron is proof that when you get young people who are innovative, the support and having that um, initiative can take them to places that we never dreamed of. And he now has what we call generational wealth being built. So a lot of people say, well, why youth entrepreneurship? And my, my, um, my explanation is this, is this simple. Our future depends on it. If youth do not in, become innovative and if they don't bring those fresh ideas and new technologies to us um, or to the world, then we would become old, antiquated, and not even efficient or effective as a society. So we need our youth to continue to use their ideas and their brains and their, their wit, even sometimes when they think that, oh, it's just something stupid, it's not. How can we develop your idea? What can we do? We need your, your brain and we need your mindset. For our area, I felt brain gain was key in youth entrepreneurship because we have lost so many youth um, to other cities and large cities and to other opportunities. But if we can get our youth to begin businesses right here in Youngstown, Ohio, in the Mahoney County and Trumbull County in our valley, then what we get a chance to do is we get to retain them and their talent because now they feel invested in the community in which they live. So we have to make sure we support as um, the, the community and their seniors and their part, uh, their older um, partners and mentors, we have to make sure we support and invest so that we can continue to keep them here in our valley. Entrepreneurship for youth teaches them skills um, from a business ownership perspective Perspective. Um, so they learn how to operate as a CEO, as a team player, as an employee. I always say that entrepreneurship is not just me owning a business, it's a mindset. So even if a young person says, you know what, entrepreneurship, owning my own business, being a business owner is not for me, the skill set that they get when participating in entrepreneurship programs, the confidence, right? Understanding how to face your fears and go for it anyway. Understanding how to handle rejection, um, how to lead and how to speak and all of those things. Those are important skills to live by in life. So I feel that is important and that helps as well. Um, it gives our students a safe place, an area where they can explore and be unique and develop their sense of purpose. And a lot of schools and a lot of um, academic um, um, locations and facilities are starting to understand um, that when you teach entrepreneurship, you're also teaching a sense of purpose. So I always ask the question, why? From old to young, I ask my young people, my older folks that come and sit down at the incubator, why did you start this business? Explain it to me. And sometimes when they get the talk and they don't understand, I'm like, so you want to solve a problem you saw, which is entrepreneurship. And they're like, I guess I was solving the problem you were. Um, so a lot of times it gets them to understand, like, so my purpose is I'm solving this problem for my community and not just for me. Um, and last but not least, tangible skills over credentials post COVID-19, we all saw, and we're seeing now what's happening with the workforce. There is um, a decrease in laborers and there are so many things that have changed due to COVID-19. So entrepreneurship is giving skills over credentials. So you may not have a piece of paper, but you've learned some new skill sets and you're learning how to cope with technologies and things of that nature after the um, COVID-19 pandemic or during, because we're still in the middle of it. So I think entrepreneurship for youth is very crucial and very important in their development. Um, another prime example I have here is a young lady named Zandra. I met Zandra at a conference when she was just 15 years old. And Zandra comes
come to find out she lives right in Buffalo, New York. And I, I frequent Buffalo a lot because of friends I have and come to find out um, we're, we all know each other, mutual friends. Um, but Zandra, I met her and I fell in love with her because she is just a firecracker by herself. Zandra started making lip balm at nine years old because her father said to, Zandra, to her that um, I'm not buying more lip balm because I said, well, what, what happened? And he said she was going through lip balm so frequently, like every week she's like, dad, I need money for lip balm. And he said, one day I just said to her, make your own. I'm not giving you money. So she took a mark on that. She went online with her mom. She said, well, how can I make it? They looked at it. They studied it. They ordered stuff. Um, she pulled out her lip balm in church one Sunday. And one of the members said, oh, Zandra do you have any more? How much is it? Are you selling those? And she says, selling it. I just, she's like, well, I, well, yeah, I can sell it. And so she started bringing them to church to sell them for a dollar. Um, needless to say, that's how she started her journey. And so by the time I met her at 15, um, Zandra was probably in or on her way into Whole Foods with her products. She had a little space, a manufacturing space she had purchased. Um, but she came here, did a class for me with some young girls, and it was phenomenal. And then I had her come back at the age of 18. When she came back at 18, her report was phenomenal. She said, Stephanie, I'm in Target. I have people manufacturing my stuff now. I still have my manufacturing plant in Buffalo, New York. People could come there. We do classes there. But I, I now have also expanded because the demand I have for Target and, and other places that I'm in. And she was like, and my business just came in and valued at a million dollars at 18 years old. Um, so she was really excited. Her parents worked for her. And it's so funny because they're like, we're challenged as parents being employees. And then when she come home, we your parents so it's like go to your room you're on punishment and so it was just it's very funny to just hear them talk about the dynamics of having your daughter now as your employer but very phenomenal young lady so proud of her um and the work that she's doing in buffalo and around the world so why support youth entrepreneurship for me um, is is simple. It it will boost our economic growth. Um, I don't know if any of you've been paying attention to the reports and things like that, especially since we're in a mayoral race and there's just so much going on. Um, but everyone's concerned. A lot of the primary concern for our community is. Where is our economic growth? How are we going to get the crime to stop? And how is this going to happen? And I truly believe when you get young people to believe in their dreams and themselves and you support that and they see a whole community, regardless of race, gender or creed, you are excited and they get excited and they want to do more. So I think definitely supporting them will boost our economy as a whole. And then also it introduces us to innovative technologies and products and services, again, because young people are um, more tech savvy than a lot of folks my age. Um, they teach me a lot. And so how they think is so innovative and they cut down a lot of the, um, I'm going to say they streamline and they make things a lot more leaner when it comes to processes and processes. So I think definitely introducing us to innovative technologies is one way. Um, they fill some of the growth gaps. And so again, in filling some of the growth gaps that we have, we think about um, the wealth and the not so wealthy, right? Their enthusiasm, their zealous, they bring us a whole new um, excitement about life and the things that we can anticipate to make our lives and living a lot easier. Um, they provide those tools that are powerful for us nationally and internationally. So I think definitely um, our economy growing, our innovation growing, growth gaps, bridges between the gaps of the wealthy and not so wealthy, they can fill in for us and they bring us a whole new level of excitement that um, we never get a chance to really see. And then the um, last entrepreneur I want to share with you tonight, um, and that is a young lady um, that actually went through our program here at the YBI. As you can see, she's with Secretary LaRose. And so Anaya Rose Reynolds, and Anaya is um, nine years old, and Anaya suffers from eczema. 
and she wanted to have, she, she's a true girly girl. So trying shea butter, she was disappointed because it would flare up her eczema, she would break out. And she just wanted to have a scented um, shea butter that she could use on her own skin. So she said, I'm going to create my own. And she did. So Anaya Rose is our youngest entrepreneur, and Anaya Rose has been selling crazy. Um, people love her products. I've used her products on burns, and they've gone away. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is like gold um, for you, Anaya. So we support Anaya. We make sure she has everything she needs. But Anaya said a quote, and I love it. She said, I got the idea to make my shea butter and lotions because I have sensitive skin. So I could probably inspire other little girls that have sensitive skin. Skin and eczema to use this product. So she was thinking about her, but also I teach our youth that entrepreneurship is not just thinking about you, but those around you. Um, again, serve with the purpose, have a business with the purpose. And her purpose is to help empower other young girls like her who want to have the experience, but their skin is too sensitive. So um, Anaya Rose Reynolds, again, we're so proud of her. She's one of ours here at the YBI in our youth program. And we are really, really excited for her future. I tell her mother all the time, I'm like, well, I think Anaya is going to be really bridging that gap with wealth. But I also think I said, by the time Anaya is 20, I think we can make her a millionaire by that point in time. So when I say that, her eyes light up and I get so excited because she's like, yes, that'll be great. Um, so we're really excited by um, Anaya's progress and energy. So the quote is, people will stereotype all day, but if you forget your own age, you'll get focused on the business that you become ultra confident and people will forget to question how old you are. So I think that that is something that we definitely need to encourage our kids that when you just do what you do in love and you do it well and you're confident in it, Age doesn't matter. That's whether you're old or young. Just do what you do the best that you can do, and people will forget your age or any other type of stereotype. So thank you so much for letting me talk tonight about youth entrepreneurship, why it's important, and why we must support it. So thank you so much, Score, for having me tonight. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Um, if anyone would like to ask any questions, we can open the floor if you are interested in doing so. And let me see how we do that. <laughs> we allow them to talk. Okay, <laughs> there you go. Alexa, and this one's me, so we're on. Alexa, were you interested in asking Stephanie anything? Um, I was just pretty much taking notes and um, trying to just um, learn from it all. So not at this time, no. I want to know about the skin products. Mm -hmm. Is she marketing in this area at this point? Um, Anaya? Mm-hmm. Um, Anaya is, she's getting her marketing together. So she just actually um, had some labels done um, and we are trying to see how we're going to get her into market. So we're working on that to get her into market. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. A lot of great. Well, she, she does have a website. So Anaya, it's Anaya oh. Rose Shea Butter. Um, she does have a website. She's on social media. Um, how, do you, how do you spell her name? Um, it is A N Y A and then Rose R O S E. Okay. And you should be able to find her website. We just had that completed for her. Great. Yes. I love the work you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, if there's nothing else, we'll set you free now. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me again. I, I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Thank you. And good luck with all these young kids. I'm, I'm just so excited that they're, that there's a, such a program. Yes. It, it's really great. And we may thank be in you. again. Thank you. Absolutely. You all have a wonderful evening. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.